It's a new week. I am back with Doomer in chief, Mr. Varun Maya. Varun, I already know with that grin on your face that you have bad news this week. Uh, let's roll packaging, then we'll get into it. Devin, this week, let's just get into it. I saw the demo. I'm not an engineer, but even I was little like, what is going on? Yeah, I remember we had built a thing called AutoCode Pro some time ago. This is that on steroids. So basically, you have GPT as the underlying base and you say, hey, GPT can write code. But then if you want to make an entire code base, if you want to make an entire app, then you sort of need to also figure out the planning part, right? You need to figure out, hey, what's the plan? How do we actually solve this problem? How do we set a set of headline tasks? How do we go inside each of these tasks and set some more tasks? And if you remember AutoGPT, AutoGPT will always get stuck, right? In the step three or step four, it'll be like, well, you need to log into this website or you need this API. And it'll go into this mindless thing where it can't find the API, so it tries like a bunch of stuff. And it doesn't, and also sometimes when it's completed the task, it doesn't know it's completed the task. So basically planning and reasoning are really weak. And that's why you can't, on top of GPT, sort of build out an entire app. You can write some code. But Devin's come out. And by the way, this was the promise of QSTAR. Remember we had covered QSTAR some time ago? QSTAR was supposed to solve planning and reasoning, right? Uh, and in fact, it's supposed to solve planning and reasoning in a low energy form, right? In a low energy way. Like you don't waste too much compute figuring out what's the most optimal path. So planning and reasoning sucks. And Devin has probably come out and said, or has come out and said that we will solve planning and reasoning. And we will use GPT to write the code after we have solved planning and reasoning. So that was the promise. And it can do end to end 13.86% of tasks, which is not a very high amount. But it also means that it gets stuck in the other 100 minus 13.86% and uh, somebody needs to help it out. But it's still a big stride from where we used to be. And I guess with better planning and reasoning that 13.86% is going to go up. So what does that mean for software engineers? I, I, I don't think that it means it's the end of software engineering jobs yet. I think I'm pretty sure it's, it gets stuck in a lot of places. But I do think that over time, the trend line is such that uh, you know, software engineers will have to move one level up and help, you know, this junior engineer on the internet called Devin uh, out and unstuck it wherever it gets stuck. Um, so people are moving one level higher. It's it's happening in all, in all domains, you know, like with AI being able to do graphics, you're able to move one level up and think what graphic needs to be made in the first place. Same things happen to software engineering with this. And what does this mean for software engineers who are just learning or starting out? I think for a long time, software engineers got really bottlenecked into this or re really gated into, okay, I'm going to be very specific about what I learned. I'm going to learn this framework, this language, this specific way of doing things. I think now decision making is more important. Like what does a senior engineer do? What does a CTO do, for example? He or she is making decisions on, well, how do we do this? Uh, what are the exact problem statements? He probably understands the nuance of what needs to be built in the first place. How do we handle scaling decisions? How does it scale? Uh, and if the junior engineer who's sitting under that person gets stuck, then the senior engineer helps out. So that's why I said, right? You, you just have to move one level up. So I don't think it requires people to be all the way in the weeds, although I do think it's a good training to actually learn what's going on in the first place. That's why I still believe it's important to learn how to code, but you might not be writing code yourself. Um, so that's what it means for junior engineers. I think less hyper-specific work and more work around, well, what needs to be built in the first place? What, what is a computer capable of? What is possible? What do the users want? Actually, for a very long time, software engineering, especially in the ZERP era, right? Two, three years ago, where you know interest rates were uh, very favorable to raising a lot of money. Uh, a lot of these software engineers, they got hyper-specialized and hyper-specific and they kind of got disconnected from revenue or sales or what customers really want. I think now you have to go back to what customers really want. Because if you ask Devin, for example, to build you the entire Zomato app or to build you an entire food delivery app, you might not know the nuance of what a food delivery app in a particular location needs to solve. For example, I gave, gave this example in a recent video, right? Where Zomato and Swiggy, like I, I met a Swiggy product manager once who kept saying that Swiggy keeps going in the background every few seconds, right? They didn't know why it was going in the background, but every few seconds it was going in the background, come back, going in the background, come back. Apparently what people were doing is they were checking the price of that item on Swiggy, then they were checking the price on Zomato and then coming back, right? That's a local nuance, right? Nuance to probably low-income countries like India. 
So you need to know a lot more about the market. And till now, that role has been called the product manager. But I feel like with AI just getting so good at doing the junior parts, these roles are starting to blur, where you do expect an engineer now to understand enough about the customer to make these decisions, and the junior engineer will execute. And you will unstuck the junior engineer if it gets stuck. It says that Devin is the... It successfully also completed real jobs on Upwork. You used, you haven't used Devin yet. No, I haven't got access to Devin yet. But I can sort of sense what it would be like. It would be very similar to AutoGPT slash AutoCode Pro, which is based on the small developer repository. But um, it will be sort of like that, but better. Like it will get, need less help. Um, and from the demos, it looks like that. Dude, I think... See, that's the thing, no? For a very long time, you had to know syntax and you had to know the problem you were solving. You had to understand the problem well, right? Like you, had, you did these two parts to write code. Now the syntax part is sort of getting solved. So if you're very clear with what you want, even a little bit of planning, the agent will help you with, right? Both the planning as well as the syntax. So Andre Kapati had put this out, had put out a tweet that English is the hottest new programming language. So I think it is, you're very right. It's going to be about clarity of thought. How well do you know your customer? How well do you know, um, you know, how well can you describe what you want? I think that's starting to become very, very important. So like high quality writing, high quality thinking, lateral thinking, understanding market gaps, which is very weird because a lot of software engineers, like especially junior software engineers, are like, hey, that's not my job, right? That's somebody else's job to figure out all of that. I'll execute it for them. But I think execution as a role is starting to like change. The meaning of execution as a role is starting to change from I will do everything myself to something else will do it. I will unstuck it and I will also help make the higher level decision so that this thing can actually, you know, just solve these problems while I think about what needs to be solved in the first place. So for example, if I needed to build a web page, can build, yeah. can write the code for building a landing page, but can it deploy it and make the website live yet? So I don't know if that's possible inside of Devin. I know it has like a, it, it can execute the code, but I feel like you'll still need to figure out hosting. Some people have their preference of where they want to host it and stuff. So I don't know if Devin's going to do that. You still need to know, to understand the landscape of writing code to be able to use Devin. But at some point, I mean, I, I saw this with Webflow, right? In the beginning, they said, hey, we will just allow you to make websites and then you can export the code and put it up wherever. Eventually, they said, okay, for another $100 a month or whatever, uh, we will also host it for you, right? And then eventually, they started preventing you from, they started doing all sorts of shady tactics to prevent you from hosting it by yourself, right? They locked you into the platform. So eventually, Devin's going to say, well, Deployment's also here, and here's the pricing. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it's a problem they need to solve today. For now, I think they need to solve the problem of unassisted code end-to-end. -end. And it seems, I think the only challenge with Devin is, like, because I haven't used it yet, we haven't got access yet, I really can't make judgments on it. If it does what it says, it does. And I know how AutoCode Pro or even AutoGPT before that behaved. AutoGPT was really bad. It used to get sidetracked very often. AutoCode Pro, less so. Devin, maybe even lesser so. I see the promise. I see the trend line of where one day we wake up and this thing is just so good that uh, somebody like you, who is who understands the customer well, who understands what is needed, can just be like, this is the exact app I want, give it to me. But I'll tell you one thing. Knowing you and knowing any CEO and people who are extraordinarily busy, you'll still hire a person to manage this. Like you'd still hire an engineer and say, okay, you can use whatever tool you want. And let's not hire too many engineers. You're enough or maybe you and one more person. You guys build this for me. This is exactly what I want. Here's the spec and you'll help them. You'll write exactly what needs to, what, what the app needs to do. So it will be a good baseline. Uh, this is what I think will happen because I don't think you have the context window to do like 500 things. So you will still hire an engineer and the engineer will use this. You'll just hire less engineers. That's, that's it. Now, what happens when you pair this with, I think the next, okay, right now there's a, there's a window which can code. The next evolution will be AI that can watch the screen of your computer and recognize what's happening on it. Like right now it's okay, inside the computer things are getting automated. But the next step would be outside the computer, watching the computer. And that part mm. also is like recognizing what's happening on screen. Yeah. Uh, and to some degree having... Does it, is that making sense? Like, I'll, I'll describe it better. You're saying right now you're using an agent to, to plan and write code for you to build an app. You're saying eventually there'll be an agent that runs your computer for you, right? Like what Induce did or HyperWrite did, right? Where they're like, 
okay, you want to write a tweet, you just say, hey, can you write a tweet? And it does, it writes the tweet for you. It goes, logs into Twitter, does everything that needs to be done. Probably has access to all your passwords uh, in a safe, secure environment. So your agent. Yeah, you. an agent that effectively replaces you watching over other agents, agent to watch over other agents. Um, yeah. And every now and then the agent needs your permission to deploy money, uh, you know. Founder's office. Founder's yeah. office to automate that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Like I feel like, I mean, when Lex Friedman asked um, uh, Sam Altman, right? What, what do you, I heard about Qstar. What do you think about Qstar? And Sam Altman just deflected saying, uh, we're not ready to talk about that yet. Can you speak to what Qstar is? We are not ready to talk about that. The promise of Qstar is it does planning so well. It is support, that's the promise that it does planning well enough such that agents can be able to be born. Because really the definition of the singularity, the original definition of the Ray Kurzweil definition of singularity was you have this thing that can spawn new versions, better versions of itself and continuously improve by itself, right? In the case of code, it would be an agent that you build and you say, well, go build another agent that's able to solve code better than you can, right? And you have like an exponential curve, right? With each agent being better than the last. We are not very far away from that day. Um, all the tools are in place and that's why everyone's racing, no? That's why, I mean, if you've seen the capital spends in AI in general, right? The amount of money being thrown, like I, I'm reading like crazy numbers now. Everyone's going after chips, everyone's going after agents and they're throwing all their money at it because they're like, this is the last race you really need to win, right? If software is eating the world, this eats software. So let's bet everything we have against it. Like people are building their own chip factories. People are, comp people are saying, I have every last dollar. This is the, this is the game I want to play. So... Agents are going to be solved. Compute is going to be like, maybe not solved, but it is going to improve by leaps and bounds because this seems to be the last big venture capital game to play. Right? If you get what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Tanmay, AMD has launched the world's first dedicated AI engine in an x86 PC processor. So this is going to be, like I told you, right? These companies are going to come together or by themselves and say, you know what? Even the compute that we have on our computers, it's got to be AI ready. So I'll give you an example, right? Of where this can actually be used today. I can blur this not in the cheap way that a lot of video software will blur it. I can blur it with AI right now with the AMD Ryzen AI. Oh, damn. That's and, and, and it doesn't affect the performance of the system. So AMD has also got this auto framing feature where even if I'm moving around in the frame, right? Maybe I have something stuck up uh, somewhere. I'm still moving around and still keeping the focus on me. That's pretty cool because like I said, none of us have the time to keep adjusting the camera all the time. Yeah, so now you can move around and not look at the camera. So yeah. My question is, why are you even on this Zoom call? Yeah, I, I think at some point you will just be able to send your digital clone and it will do the entire call for you. Like, I don't think this is far away. Like, I know Ajahn released their instant avatar also recently. I don't need to be on computer. I don't need to yeah. look at camera. I don't yeah. need to code. Yeah. And there's someone looking over what's happening on my computer. So I do do? I job. Not MP4. <laughs> See, I used to, earlier I would say at least you can go farm or something, but I think that also AI will do. Elon Musk is building Optimus. So maybe we won't even need to do that. But then society will change, I guess. It'll adapt around this. The only thing that was left was having your own personal AI assistant. And I think even that's solved for. Now you can have your own personal AI assistant that can do your monthly budgeting, write email responses. Um, this is like having Jarvis on your laptop at this point. And eventually it'll be an agent like we just spoke about. So it will be an agent. It will do all your tasks for you. If you wanted to log into your bank account and check your balance and send you a text, it can do all of that. Like it can't do it today, but the, I'm pretty sure this is going to be possible without you spending on subscriptions. It's just going to happen straight from your GPU and consumer GPUs are just getting better and better and better. So it is such an exciting world to be in where we are no longer bounded by how well we can execute things, but how the clarity of our thoughts and ideas and how do we use these tools? And this is like pure being a human, right? Like the reason humans became the dominant species on earth was because of tool use. We were the best tool users in all of, animal, in all of the animal kingdom. And this has really given us the opportunity to take tool use to the maximum. Like just think, decide what tool you need to use. How well do you string these tools together? That's what it's become. And I think in a world like this, we'll end up playing a lot more games, which again, AMD Ryzen AI actually solves for because, you know, we all suffer with lag all the time. 
but AMD has a bunch of features with AI to actually make your frame rates really good in every modern game. So if you're spending 10 hours a day playing games, the same technology that allows us to, to free our time and put us now in all these games, that technology makes these games look better, look smoother and run faster. And of course, the AI can also help with privacy. Varun, I have had my YouTube channel hack. And thanks to uh, Ryzen AI, the risk of uh, hacking goes lower because it uses AI to detect threats and actually fixes them. Yeah, AMD has also launched the Ryzen 7 8840U processor, a flagship product of their new 8000 series lineup, which leverages its combined CPU, GPU and NPU, which is the neural processing unit, to provide up to 38 trillion operations per second, making things like content creation, video production, running AI models locally, all of that pretty spiffy on your computer locally, like I said. So until the 8000 series is out, you can try the 7000 series laptops. Hey, this is the Euron and AMD laptop right now. Yeah. And also shout out to AMD for sending us these cool laptops. Um, I got to try all of this by myself. So go check them out at amd.com slash Ryzen AIPCs. Shout out to AMD for sponsoring this. All right. So Claude has beaten GPT-4. Claude 3 has beaten GPT-4. You actually, I, we discussed this. What do you think is Claude is better than GPT at? Dude, Claude is much better than GPT. Like, I think Claude writes so well. These benchmarks are slightly misleading. I don't look at benchmarks anymore. Because even though it looks like it beats GPT, I think it beats GPT by a wide margin. Have you used Claude to write? I have not, but after you suggested, I... Dude, Tanmay, we're going to do this live experiment, okay? Tanmay, do you have any public writing available? Anything that you've written? I need an article that you've written because I'm going to show you how good this thing is. Okay, I found something from 2013, okay? I'm just copying all this, okay? So I'm going to copy this article by Tanmay in 2013 about FIFA diaries, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this into Claude. So now it appears as a pasted piece into Claude. And I'm going to be like, hey, I want you to write in the style of the author of this document. I want you to write a, an ad script. Not ad script. Say I want you to write a funny article about cricket because this one is about FIFA. A funny article about cricket in the style in the style of this author we used to use fine tuning to do this in the past but like in context is just so much better okay, i want to read it out like most indian men i too am a big fan of cricket on the tv of course i never really played the sport in real life because i suffered from what is scientifically known as complete lack of hand eye coordination besides being indian made me genetically predisposed to obsessing over the game from my couch rather than stepping onto an actual pitch that's actually kind of funny Recently, the BCCI announced a new domestic T20 tournament called the Bharatiya Premier League to tap into the goldmine that is a cricket-crazy public, Indian public. Naturally, as a true devotee of the gentleman's game, I immediately ran to my computer, googled BPL live stream free and settled in to watch the inaugural match. Wallet firmly closed. The BPL had gone all out, assembling an eclectic mix of players from aging Indian stars, desperately clinging to relevance to unknown youngsters from the hinterlands, to mediocre foreign, foreign players lured by the sweet smell of rupees. It was a feast for the senses. And then so on and so forth. This is actually really good writing. Like, GPD wouldn't write like this. And this is kind of in your style also. Wait, one second, one second. Has, has said, the commentary box pairing of Sidhu and Shashi Tharoor proved interesting. Uh, viewers were treated to a delightful mix of incomprehensible metaphors, impressive vocabulary, and Indian anecdotes. It was like having a thesaurus and a laughter challenge winner on the same couch. How the hell did it get? How the fuck did it get Sidhu and Tharoor these references? Like, how did it think of Sidhu and Tharoor, Tharoor? and their like? Yeah. No idea. So this is not in the original article. No idea. See this: the Mumbai money is owned by a famous Bollywood star requested a two-hour delay to their match start time as the entire squad was busy attending the owner's movie premiere. Request approved, obviously. What's a little schedule change compared to the whims of the rich and famous? This is exactly how you would write. I mean, not exactly. Like, it would be funnier. Like, what's a little schedule change compared to the whims of the rich and famous? It's something you'd say, like... But it is... Um, the comedy writing is all about angles. So, I know at the very least, this has given angles to... To write. Like while the last mile finishing of okay, I would not frame a punchline like this. It's giving me yeah. angles to think about of But Tanmay, I'll tell you one thing. This we put one article. If you give me 30 of your best written pieces, this will write. Dude, 
I just fed it a book I'd written, and it writes so well. It writes sorta of like me, right? Sagar is now using it for for our AI generated reels anyway. So it's like sometimes I'm also surprised with like, oh, that's kind of a sentence that I'd write, and I start picking them out from like, like, dude, I don't know. It's just I think Claude is awesome, and all that GPT needed. GPT writes like on BPO, just has to say good things, otherwise sell that gunpoint or something. But Claude, when you give it like somebody's writing and say write like this person, it writes, it writes. Maybe not 100% like that person, but like 70, 80% like that person, which I love. It has personality. It doesn't have personality, but you're asking it to copy somebody else's personality, which is awesome. No funky stuff, no fine tuning. It's phenomenal. Dude, I love Claude. Claude writes really well. In fact, I, I want to try write an ad uh, of Johnny Sins. I write an ad in the style of the author. The author of Johnny Sins. um uh in uh, an indian soap opera what's it called television serial i'll be very pissed if it write something good no 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 it's not it's not writing it's writing like a show show yeah yeah you need to give proper context give proper context <laughs> i like that it's called jane sins dude that's pretty good GPT would never be this creative. I, my feeling is, look at this. So grab your popcorn, put the kids to bed, and get a wild ride with John A. Sins. Jatin Singhania returns from doing business in America to find his father's business. <laughs> I like how it's put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how it's put to quotes. Dude, that's actually pretty legit. This is pretty legit. It, just in these two examples, it's feeling like. Every tenth episode will feature Johnny Bhai in a steamy shower scene, soaping himself while contemplating how to defeat his devious stepsister's plan to take over the company. This is exactly like an Indian serial. It's the perfect blend of sin and sanskar. What discretion? No actual plot coherence guaranteed. Viewer discretion strongly advised. Like it has, Claude has personality. No, it's stealing your personality. That's what I'm saying. So I'm going to redo this. I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to create a new chat. With Claude, okay. I'm going to paste this. Now I'm going to be like, write a 45 second ad in the style of the author of this document. The style of the author of this writing for a sexual health brand called. Okay, write a 45 second ad in the style of the author of this writing. For a sexual health brand called Bold Care, featuring Johnny Sins and popular YouTuber, actor, and popular Bollywood actor Ranveer Singh, parodying a typical dramatic Indian television serial. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's read this. Hey, my brother, what happened? You are leaving me. Yes, Ranveer, I have to go. For my sexual health. For my sexual health. But what happened? I don't know. Nothing is good. I don't know. Nothing is good. 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 इसके लिए मुझे बोल्ड केयर की जरूरत है बोल्ड केयर ये क्या चीज है भाई अरे यार तू नहीं जानता बोल्ड केयर से तो हम मर्द अपनी सेक्सुअल हेल्थ का ख्याल रख सकते हैं इनकी ये दवा और ये प्रोडक्ट्स एकदम कमाल के हैं सच चलो फिर मैं भी ट्राई करता हूँ बोल्ड केयर क्योंकि मर्द की सेक्सुअल हेल्थ भी इंपॉर्टेंट है गेट बोल्ड केयर ना ऑफ में फार्मेसी इट्स बैड यार डू सम सास बहूस एंड मेक एंड and make sure it has hindi punchline <laughs> <laughs> you read this yeah it made ranveer a girl this is not working this <laughs> yeah this won't work you need to give it more direction yeah. opus or what yeah claude three opus don't just feed it all your writing it will start writing like you oh really yeah it's stealing basically your personality stealing is a strong word who owns anthropic a lot of people uh, sbf FTX guy, the scammer. He's invested in Anthropic. Amazon's invested, I think. But I think it's pretty good, and I think it writes pretty well. And I think the magic is in the context window. Uh, even Gemini's long context window is awesome because you can just feed it more stuff. You can just take all the meme reviews you've ever done, clip it into one long video, feed it into Gemini's long context window, and just say, please, you know, make. We react to these five memes based on this person's personality. Even if it's not hundred percent possible now, it will be possible in like a few months. 
In fact, Claude, Claude has also has some side effects, right? Like, for example, um, Claude 3 Opus just reinvented the quantum algorithm from scratch in just two prompts. The paper is not on the internet yet. So it can discover new science. Uh, I don't know how true this is because, uh, you know, when if you ask Claude, can you discover new science? He says, no, that's not possible. But that's probably, you know, that's how it's trained. But it seems to be able to make connections from things like the Johnny Sins and the John E. Sins. It's able to make new connections, which is kind of the basis of science. But then also science, I mean, when you try to figure out new science, you run tests that are falsifiable, which means you can actually run the test in real life and see, okay, you had a hypothesis, did that turn out to be true or false? You had a theory, would that turn out to be true or false? So uh, Claude is seems to be much smarter than GPT, at least from... Even my own test of Claude, it seems to be far smarter than GPT. I'm going to give Claude 3 a run. All right, let's move yeah. on. Dude, major, major update. Midjourney has introduced character consistency. Yeah, it sucks. Not good? I think it sucks. Like I tried it. It's, it's not replicating the same character. It's replicating a character that somewhat looks like the, the original character that you sent it. It's like, like look at this picture of Sid, Sydney Sweeney, right? Like the generated versions are all like, it's not her. And same with any character you give it. It'll generate something, but it won't generate her. In fact, the instant ID, remember that we tried many episodes ago to make thumbnails. Those are much better in terms of maintaining character consistency than this one. Right? So it's not there at all. But I do think they will get fixed at some point. This will get fixed at some point. But it's also for some use cases. For example, instead of saying that, hey, I want you to generate this person doing X, Y, and Z. You can now say that I want you to generate something like this person in mm. X, Y, and Z. Otherwise, first you would have to do some guesswork on what the prompt to generate something like this person would be, which I think mm. is now solved for. Like if I say yeah. that I want, you know, I want to I wanna make a print ad with someone like a Sydney Sweeney sitting on a blue car, like that type of character. And that I think would be, that is solved for now. Like typecasting, mm. basically. But but I think uh, Midjourney also has like the face swap bot, right? On Discord, uh, the in swapper, inside face face swap bot. So I think this is useful because it kind of keeps the face structure, and then you just have to replace the facial features, um, which I think the combo might lead to better results. But I think there is a way better way to do this with stable diffusion if people are willing to get their hands dirty. Uh, but it's also not like very far away. At some point, Midjourney is just going to say, okay, most people are using character consistency for real human faces. And we got to be very accurate about that. And there are tools right now, like I can tell you, like we've done episodes on this before, right? There are tools right now that maintain face consistency much, much, much better to the point where it's like 80, 90% accurate. I'm actually surprised this is behind the curve for Midjourney. And Midjourney has always been ahead of the curve. So, but I do know that the Midjourney team is focusing on something new, which is video. So I, I'm pretty sure that that's been taking most of the team's time. They have a lot of money at this point and they are now very focused on video. So I'm excited to see their counter to Sora, which is coming at some point. Okay, new, new content will come out in like a week or so. Uh, it's going to be a good week for AI. All right, another week, another episode down. You just said that uh, next week is going to be a big week for AI. Why? I don't know. Every week is a big week for AI. <laughs> You're like clickbait as a person, dude. Anyway. See you guys in the next episode. Hit that subscribe button. Bye.